Hi, I just want to share with you some tips I have on setting up your workspace and just little hacks for making your mosaic life easier. So one of my favorite um, ways to organize my material is on paper plates. I can just cut right onto them, but the best part is when I'm done, I can just give it a little fold and um, ugh, dump it back in the bag or whatever other kind of container you're using. Also, you can save them for your next project. I use smaller ones if I'm working on things a little smaller. They're nice because you can spread your materials out and look for the size in your cut materials. The other thing I like to do is my cleanup. I can just tuck it under the table and brush all my materials and scrap off and sort as needed. Hi there. A bunch of years ago, I wrote this book. The publisher asked for 100 tips, but I had 300. I couldn't help myself. There's a lot to learn about mosaic making. Today, I want to talk with you about the wisdom of the plastic shoebox. In our mosaic studio, it can be incredibly helpful on countless fronts. It's tip number eight in this book. Turn the box on its side and use as a nipping station. This is a great tip for beginners and to use at workshops. No concerns about flying shards hitting your neighbor. And always wear safety glasses when nipping. Because I can see what's inside every box, I use see-through boxes and containers for all kinds of storage, and they are easy to transport. Dry paintbrushes are super helpful on countless fronts. The paintbrush is one of my favorite cleaning tools and it works great for cleaning off the top of your hardy because a bench brush can be a little bit unwieldy. I also use it to clean little particles on my mosaics while I'm working on them. And you can get almost all of it all cleaned up. It can be a bit overwhelming going to the home improvement store and having to buy this 20 pound bag of thin set. And it's really important to store it well. It needs to be kept in an airtight container. So while you're there, if you don't already have a snap lid bucket, get some kind of snap lid container or a bucket. And then you can store it anywhere in an out of the way place like the garage or your basement, as long as it's sealed tightly. Also, take some out and you can put it into a smaller airtight container to keep handy in your studio so you don't have to deal with the big bucket every time you need to mix a little thin set. I need to take a little break now so a quick little studio tip is I just will take another container or something and cover my my adhesive so it doesn't skin over while I'm gone here's a quick tool tip because I'm kind of messy and I forget to clean my tools sometimes so I always like to take if you take one tool, it makes it really easy to scrape the adhesive off. In this case, I was using um, pre-mixed thin set. Oh, no, I forgot your thing. So you can just scrape this off the next day with your other tool. Um, Stanley knife or whatever, instead of trying to soak it because it really doesn't soak that well. Homemade compass. Stir sticks from Home Depot. Put a little nail down here. Attached a pen here. Now I can make my circle by, I know my center. I put my pin in it. I line up my pen. And now I got myself 
one big honking compass. Just a note about Ziploc bags. Um, they come in different thicknesses and different weights. So it's always better to use the storage bag rather than the sandwich bag style because they're a little heavier and they hold up to being used like a pastry bag for a while. In some places you can get other bags that are even thicker. This is a four mil bag. Uh, I like to use those the most, but they're not available to everybody. And what we're gonna do is just tuck this bag into a cup and turn the top over so that we don't get the zipper all messed up. Give our thin set a new skewer. And at this point, uh, the face mask really isn't necessary because it's no longer a powder floating about. We're just going to fill this up. And now, fold our bag up. Take it out. And I like to zip it most of the way closed and then squeeze everything down to one corner and get as much air out at this point as you can before zipping it shut. And now we have it down and you can use tape or a rubber band, but it's helpful to put something around this portion so that it's not like coming back up the top. If you've ever decorated cakes, I'm sure you're quite familiar. <laughs> more time and now we have our scissors and we just cut off a little corner of this and then you can simply apply your thin set a little bit at a time it also keeps this from drying out and hardening and allows you a longer work time When you go to the hardware store to buy screws or washers, take a sample of your substrate with you so you're 100% sure you're getting exactly what you need. We always need to be safety conscious when using any cement-based product that includes grout or thinset and wear a respirator mask while mixing it's dangerous in its powdered form because it contains silicas. Do this. We'll start this. We'll just, we'll just hold it like this. And remember, <laughs> life's, life's a mosaic. mosaic. You, you pick, pick the pieces. pieces. I forgot we were saying it together. Okay. Wait a minute. And happy faces. And... Remember, life's a mosaic. You pick the pieces. Dry paintbrushes are super helpful on countless fronts. Dry paintbrushes are super helpful on countless fronts. Dry paintbrushes are super helpful on countless fronts.